Um, thanks for coming, everybody. My name is Simon Eaton. I uh, have the um, pleasure of working at a business called 50 Technologies, and I also I actually know nothing about Web3, really, compared to the... I've learned a huge amount over the last couple of days. Um, but fortunately, that's not why I'm here. So that's um, hopefully going to be still interesting for everybody. Um, the business that I work for is uh, audience insights and advertising business. I can use other words, but ultimately that we care about um, understanding human beings better and then deriving intelligent action from that insight. Um, the reason that's important specifically for a sector like um, anything involved in Web3 is that uh, innovation leads to... Mis uh, the, the audience is always changing. The audience is always going to be different as a business grows and as a product becomes more popular. And it isn't easy to understand an audience. Um, you probably, I've talked to about 50 people downstairs over the last day or so, and I think if you're building a product, you probably understand really well the first set of people that are supposed to buy that product. Um, otherwise, you probably wouldn't be building it, and you definitely probably shouldn't be building it if you can't, if you don't know who's going to buy it initially. Um, that's definitely what the um, startup subreddits generally tell me. But I think the, the, the challenge is then to drive in significant growth, to drive internationally, to drive you know, the growth of additional products is really difficult because you're going to need to sell it to different people. Um, not everybody is going to understand your product on the off. And as you bring out new products, you're going to be selling to different people that are hard to understand. So I, the, the premise of this session was supposed to be a, a workshop on the why you should understand audience, um, what the benefits of understanding both your current audience better and having the vision to sort of understand the next audience is, why that's valuable. And then shoehorning a sales pitch in the end about why we're the best solution to do that, regardless of what it is that you sell. Um, so hopefully that's fine, but it's not just going to be me, uh, me pitching at you. Hopefully we can add some actual value. Um, you know, there are a few pieces of analysis. I'm going to do a live demo, so gladly there's not too many people here to see that crash and burn. Um, you know, there are a few pieces of analysis that we're going to run through. One is the crypto community in the UK from 2019 compared to 2022. It's totally different. Um, you know, the, there's the difference between the NFT community and we've got another piece, piece that we were looking at uh, earlier into the Solano community. Solana community. Um, I'm going I'm to do some slides, so something for you to look at as well. Go back to the title. Um, what does mainstream mean? That's going to be one of, the, uh, one of the things we're going to attempt to answer, but clearly mainstream means different things to different people. No audience is one thing. People are complicated, and therefore, it, it, it's not something that exists in a traditional business to throw loads of money and loads of effort at understanding people, but I am, we feel at 50 that it should be. It should be a massive part of everything. Like the decision-making and the effort that goes into new product development, marketing strategy, partnership strategy, influencer strategy, advertising strategy should be derived from understanding of who it is you're trying to sell to. Um, and if you're a big established brand, you're probably spending loads of money on surveys, on focus groups, on panel-based research. But none of that shit works for, the, for what it is you guys do, because Nielsen or YouGov or Kantar or these sort of traditional places that a brand would go to try and understand audience isn't valid because the audience that you guys sell to evolves on an ongoing basis and is different in different markets, has different ages. It's not, it's not you know, uh, somebody younger, I'm not gonna use any cliches around demographics, is just not interested in filling out a survey to give you information to some archaic, archaic institution. So you need to find a different way and you need to use digital data and therefore to try and understand that audience. The challenge is, sorry, We've got loads of clients. I hate that slide. Um, there are challenges around this, though, because if you start, if you start off with the challenge of like, what you start off as a business, like, right, it's going to be really valuable for me to try and understand people better that I may sell to and to drive the growth of my business in the future. We all, you can, anybody disagree that that's a good strategy? Probably shouldn't ask questions. It's just opening the door to. Um, to a car crash potentially, but it, it, it is a good strategy. You should be understanding people better, um, but it's not easy. Um, the whole Web3 sector has significant challenges around these things. 
data privacy, the you know that tech as a as a industry, if you like, is obviously under in, intense scrutiny with regards to its um, sustainability. The fact that people are all over the place nowadays, these are all like legitimate challenges. The way that, there are lots of ways you can understand audience. You can, you can use a more traditional supplier that will do really robust analyses into um, answer very specific questions that you may have. And that would be, I don't know if you guys are familiar, these are, Cantal's not British business, and British specifically, YouGov is primarily a British business. But they are the survey businesses. They are the ones that Unilever is using to understand who should buy their products next. Um, but the other, the, di the digital sphere for so solving this problem has also been awful. Like it doesn't, it's never had the robustness of the of the traditional players. So I can't lift my arm any, any higher. I broke my shoulder. That's, I'm normally a hand person. Um, but but the digital suppliers are rubbish. This works um, because. You take this, take, take this social environment, social listening feels like a really nice place to understand what people are thinking, how people are feeling, what are the trends, what are they interested in, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? The problem is that data is rubbish. I feel like I should swear more now that you've built up my... Uh, all I did is tell... I asked, Mark to, I asked marketing to give me an edgy title so they put a swear word in it. But you can't use social listening as a valid way of understanding audience. Most of us, if we did a show of hands, actually, I'm going to do this. I've never done this before. Put your hand up if you post on social media. So about half, maybe. So I just, I, I, if I build a piece of assets, I buy an extensive subscription to one of these platforms, half of you are not in that data set. And you're still valuable. We still love you. You are still useful. You are still a potential customer for us, especially you guys. That's why you didn't put your hands up. Um, but it's important to have robust data, but it's also important that it's massive. You need data from different markets. You need scaled data. You want, you want to be looking at hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people at a time, not 2,000 people or 100 people in a focus group. So our method is, to be, is attempting to be both of those things. The, the, the methodology that we've chosen to try and understand a human being better is to bring together multiple digital data sources. It's to, it is to take the social listening, but it's also to look at what it is that people follow, what it is that people engage with online, because that's a robust way of understanding them as well. What are they doing on the internet? What are they consuming? What are they reading? But if you can combine that information with first party information with your actual CRM as well, then you're really nailing your understanding of your current customers. Um, and if you can then look, at, look outwards as well into competitor analysis, um, into key influencer audiences in the space, event audiences, should have done analysis of Zebu Live before we came, and I could use that as an example, but it would have been interesting. We would have been able to see who, who, who the audience breakdown was. Maybe I could have sold it to Zebu. Um, this is all just sales stuff. don't really want to talk about that. Um, the other thing is insights are like, I don't know how many people have dealt with data platforms and insights platforms, but they're mostly really boring. Like it's just, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe you guys love that data stuff. But it's like if the, 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 the information that's provided when you're doing audience analysis needs to be engaging and it needs to be usable. Like if, if you send it over to the marketing team and they don't understand it, then they're not going to use it. So, and, and traditionally, whether it's a business intelligence platform or an audience insights platform or any data platform, to be honest, UIs are generally pretty awful. And even if there is a really robust story to how the data is made, it's not getting used. So you're investing loads of money in things that have no tangible outcome. So when you're choosing what your audience insights methodology needs to, is going to be. It needs to be something that's visual. It needs to be clear and it needs to be um, like useful for the actual people that are trying to build your business. Like this is, the, this, is the, this is a place that the growth, the future growth of each business can base itself on. Like we did a piece of analysis. We do all sorts of different studies and for all sorts of different companies. But for, for a, a luxury car company a little while ago, we did a global analysis of everybody who used to buy their cars. 
The challenge being, all of those people were dying. And you cannot sell to people that are dead. So you need to find who is going to buy, the, buy those cars next. I won't tell you who it is. But you can probably guess, there's not that many of them. But they, they had the wherewithal to understand that they needed growth. They needed to sell to a different demographic. So they needed to understand the modern affluent person who was engaging around uh, the type of vehicles, the people that can afford a quarter of a million pound car. Um, and they took all of the insight that we created for them on board and made tangible changes to their strategy. Like they, imp they sped up the speed to uh, the electric vehicle, which still hasn't come out, which is a bit nuts in the, in this, in the, in the modern world, but they sped it up as far, to much faster because they realized how important it was to their audience. What they'd been doing previously was getting 200 customers to their factory once every two years, playing with them with champagne and trying to learn about and making, you know, just making decisions based off of that data, which is obviously not useful when they're all too old and, and not, not, a, not gonna be able to buy the next vehicle. When you looked at who that brand was resonating with now by using Experian data, WealthX data, which are two massive external data providers we accessed, you saw it as a totally different demographic um, in a totally different market. And if you saw what that brand's done since, they did, they stopped partnering with golf, they pulled out of motorsport, and now they have partnerships with rappers and basketball stars. And they're at a 25% growth this year. They've sold an extra, it's only a thousand cars, but the profit margin on these cars is insane. But use, that's a tangible example of using audience insight to change everything. Change the product, change the marketing, change the influencers, change the advertising, change everything. And in order to realize that you can't, even when you're an established global brand, you cannot be complacent. Just because you understand who buys the product today doesn't mean that they're gonna be around to buy the product tomorrow. So you need to be constantly researching who those people might be. Um, this is not what, relevant to what I was talking about. There's essentially the, the tangible, having a tangible output of the insight is my, is my point here. One of the things that, that, that we, Hang our, hung our hat on a few years ago was that insights are great, but what if you could use that data directly to buy audiences through digital marketing on a global basis? So you could curate a really strong piece of audience insight, and then you go like that audience, that audience, that audience, and that audience. Now I want to buy it on Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, Reddit, that doesn't matter. You have to have all the pipes, you have to have all the relationships, but it creates a tangible output to the, to the insight which is, I suppose, like a key learning. Insights alone is just not that helpful. Um, I'm gonna dive into a couple. Mm -hmm. Bear with me. Okay. It's a bit of a random analysis of the things that we built over the last day or so, different sorts of, just different sorts of things. Okay, so the first analysis I'm gonna bring up is, is the crypto community in the UK in 2019. This is taking a sample, uh, tens of thousands of people that engage with particular brands within the, the crypto community and live in the UK. Then, then our platform is, is attempting to segment them by mutual connectivity, so grouping them together into tribes um, and deep diving into that audience um, to either validate ideas that in this case particular crypto brand that we were working with had and whether these are the right audiences for them to be pursuing in the future. And to my point about visualization, hopefully this is strong visuals. It's trying to understand, hey, it turns out Subfocus is popular with this particular group. And that's a pretty niche one. Yeah, correct. So you're accessing here in, in this particular instance millions of social data points via the social graph from things like the Twitter firehose, from Reddit, from YouTube, from little bits of metadata, and trying to bring that all together to understand audience. In this case, just look, trying to get a top line view. It's a bit small, I don't know if you guys can see that. To, so in this case, you've got 50,000 individuals as a sample audience. They follow 3.83 million different things. That is the data point we care about. We then run that through 
an algorithm, and it segments the audience into, into tribes, big and broad at the top, smaller and more niche as you, as you go down. Bear in mind, this is 2019. So it's, I have, you, it's usually a pretty, it, almost all the audience exists in the top sort of four or five tribes. These are almost, they're too small to count. Um, and it's almost everybody, there's like a super enthusiastic person around the crypto, around the crypto space. Um, crypto investors, techies, deve developers, US techies, and then young people apparently. Um, but if you look at this compared to, we'll go into it, I'll just briefly go into the next, to, to, to the 2022 one. And we can see that the audience has changed. To the point of what does mainstream mean? Well, mainstream is different at different times to different things. Here, I mean, suddenly the biggest, the biggest tribe within the crypto community in 2022 is young males, which it probably is, we could have all probably thought or talked about this and probably all agreed that this is probably what's happened. But now the, the, the big data is actually proving that that is what's happened. The first tribe is young males, the, crypto, the, the technologists are still there, but then there's all sorts of other segments of humanity that are existing underneath that. The avid gamers are there, the, the, the run-of-the-mill professionals are there. And this is talking to the adoption of, of crypto towards the masses, if you like. And I suppose our platform is just demonstrating what you can achieve by, by utilizing digital data at scale. Um, you know, if we looked into one of these, I'll just show you a few visuals. So, our, so the platform is designed to try and be useful for helping you understand audience. In this case, these are the things these people follow the most. And loads of it will be boring super influencers that have got tens of millions of followers like Edward Snowden or um, JK Rowling. But there's other interesting stuff in there too. We can see what, they're, what kind of websites these people are visiting. We can see how they describe themselves online. We can see the kind of jobs they have, the gender, the time of day they're online. I suppose the problem we're trying to solve in this regard is, can I find an audience that's interesting? Can I, is this an audience that can buy my product? And do I wanna invest in that audience to communicate with them effectively? What then happens with this, ideally, is that it gets sent to the creative people within your business or your creative agency or whoever's actually building messaging and videos and advertising and such. And they use this data to come up with better ideas in order to reach these people better. It can, decent insight can then help inform your strategy for, oops, wrong one. That's definitely the wrong one. I totally lost it. <laughs> There's loads of great presentations here. Oh yeah, it's on. Yeah, put it on a different tab. <laughs> I go back to the. I go back to the slides. Just before we finish off. Um, so there's a few a, a few key findings, and this this information is available if anybody wants it. Into either we've got we've built analyses into the crypto communities, uh, both in the UK and the US and globally. We've looked at NFT marketplaces in each each part of the world as well. We've also built into individual exchanges, different, different brands. We've done competitor analysis between multiple brands in the sectors, and, and we're willing to make this insight available. Um, the idea being that hopefully we demonstrate that this stuff can be useful, uh, everybody learns something, and then you give us a ring and start working with us. But you know, feel, feel free, reach out to us. We're in a little, we're in a little booth downstairs. Um, that if if you would like more insight into a sector that's relevant to your business, we have it, and we're willing to share it with you. So you know, if, if that's not useful, then fair enough. Um, I think we've been through that. These are the, the the key the key takeouts from the different audiences over over the few years. Um, I think in it, th these are the from a. That's the, the crypto community one. From the Web3 generic audience, um, you know, the, 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 what we've learned is that Web3 has gained a lot more credence. The, the professionals from B2 
beyond the world of technology have woken up to Web3. There's a huge amount of engagement within finance, property, and actually always design nowadays. Perhaps that's because of the curiosity that exists within the design community. Um, but it does vary across territories significantly. The data isn't standard, and I think that's one of the things that in order to build authenticity in your communications with an audience, the more understanding you have, the, be the more authentic you will be, and the more likely they are to respond to what it is you're trying to say to them. So it's, uh, you know, the, the more granular your understanding by market and, and by passion, the better you can be in your communications with the audience. Um, I think that hopefully that's relatively logical, but in, in reality that leads to significantly more effective effectiveness of when you start spending money to engage these people, you will make better decisions as a result of it. Um, I suppose I'll finish with this. Um, ultimately, we've seen this over the last five years in other sectors that some have come, some have gone, um, and generally we've always found the best adoption of our methods within innovative sectors. Um, but it's the brands that truly understand their audience and are willing to accept that the audience evolves and that they need to put time, effort, and cash into communicating with those people and learning about how to communicate with them. You will make better decisions if you are prepared to learn more um, and be more open-minded in your attitude towards your current audience and your future audience. Um, thanks very much. <laughs>